Okay, let me start by reviewing what we've done with eigenvalues so far. So if we have an n by n square matrix, we know how to compute the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors of A. The way we compute the eigenvalues is that we compute the characteristic power allele, and we find the roots of the characteristic power allele and those are the eigenvalues. And then for each one of those eigenvalues, we compute the kernel of A minus lambda identity. That kernel is the lambda eigenspace and the vectors in the lambda eigenspace are the lambda eigenvectors. And we've learned that life is particularly good if A has an eigenbasis, because then we can diagonalize A. And an eigenbasis, let me remind you, means a basis of eigenvectors. So before I say anything more, I want to just put up some examples of different things that can happen when we carry out this algorithm. And these will be examples where sometimes we'll see that we do get an eigenbasis and sometimes we don't. And let's see different ways that this can happen. So the simplest thing that can happen is that our characteristic power wheel can have n distinct roots. So here is some matrix for one negative two, uh, sorry, for one negative two one. The characteristic polynomial, we take the product of the diagonal terms. That's over here. And we take the product of the off diagonal terms. That's over here. And, and here's what we get when we do the computation. And this power wheel turns out to factor as a product of two linear factors, t minus two times t minus three. So what this computation shows us is that this matrix has eigenvalues two and three. Okay. <clears throat> and then if we don't just want the eigenvalues, but we also want the eigenvectors, we, for each of those two eigenvalues, two and three, we compute the kernel of A minus lambda identity. And here it is. Each of them has a one dimensional kernel spanned by one vector. And so we get that one minus two is a basis for the two eigenspace. And one minus one is a basis for the three eigenspace. <clears throat> okay, so this is a sort of computation that you hopefully have been doing in your homework and doing in your sections and are getting used to doing. And uh, this slide just summarizes what we just did. We computed that the eigenvalues were two and three. The corresponding eigenvectors were one minus two and one minus one. The vectors V1 and V2 form a basis. So since they're a basis for an n-dimensional space, a two-dimensional space in this case, there are n of them and the eigenvalues are distinct. This is about as nice as things can possibly be. Now, here's something that might happen instead, something that's not as nice. If you take this matrix, you take its characteristic polynomial, you get t squared plus two, and that polynomial has no roots, or at least it doesn't have real roots. We'll talk about complex numbers in the next lecture, possibly the one after that. Um, but it doesn't have real roots, so at least if we're thinking about real roots and real vectors, there are no eigenvectors for this matrix. Here's another thing that can happen. Characteristic power to wheel can have repeated roots. And here are two different examples. So this matrix, 3003, when I take the characteristic power to wheel, I get 3 minus t squared. This matrix is almost B is almost the same, except it has a 1 in the upper right instead of a 0. And its characteristic power to wheel is also 3 minus t squared. 
So they have the exact same characteristic polynomial. And so, We see that in both cases, the eigenvalues, the only eigenvalue is three. And then when we compute the eigenspaces, <clears throat> one of them is the kernel of A minus three times the identity. In the case of A, we take the kernel of A minus three times the identity. That's the all zero matrix. The kernel is everything. Whereas in the, for the matrix B, we wind up taking the kernel of this matrix with a one in the upper right coming from over here. And that kernel is one dimensional. So in the first case, every vector is an eigenvector for A, but the eigenvectors of B lie in a one-dimensional subspace. Okay. And so A minus and B have the exact same characteristic polynomial, three minus T squared. But A has an eigenbasis. Again, every vector is an eigenvector for A, and B doesn't. All the eigenvectors of B lie in a one dimensional subspace. So we see that. In this case where there are repeated roots, it's not clear whether it's going to be an eigenbasis or not. And what at the characteristic power of your doesn't tell you. Okay, so we want to talk about this sort of situation more generally. And in order to do that, we're going to introduce some vocabulary words. So let A be a square matrix. Let lambda be a scalar. The geometric multiplicity of lambda is the dimension of the lambda eigenspace. So the kernel of A minus lambda identity. So this is the thing that we computed to be E2 for the matrix where everything was an eigenvector and one when all the eigenvectors just lay on a line. And the algebraic multiplicity of lambda is the number of times the factor lambda minus T occurs when we factor the characteristic polynomial. So going back to this example, the uh, geometric multiplicity of the eigenvalue three is one for this matrix B, but the <clears throat> but it is two for this matrix A, because in the first case, the three eigenspace was one dimensional, and in the second case, the three eigenspace was two dimensional. On the other hand, and both of them had the same characteristic power over all, so the algebraic multiplicity is two both times. Okay, so using this vocabulary, we're gonna prove a bunch of theorems and these theorems will tell us sort of what can happen with these different concepts and in particular when we do and don't have an eigenbasis. So let A be an n by n square matrix with eigenvalues lambda one, lambda two, dot, 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 lambda k. Let AI be the algebraic multiplicity of lambda i. Let VI be the lambda i eigenspace. So let GI be the dimension of the lambda i eigenspace. So GI is the geometric multiplicity. And here's the first claim. So here's the first theorem. The first theorem is we have an eigenbasis exactly if the GIs sum up to n. So in some sense, that's an answer to when we have an eigenbasis. If you compute all these dimensions and they add up to the size of your matrix, that's an eigenbasis. Now, this is an answer which involves computing all those eigenspaces. It'd be nicer to have an answer of just algebraic multiplicities in it because that comes from the characteristic polynomial. 
We can't really do that, but we could definitely say some things about algebraic multiplicities and having an eigenbasis. So here's one thing to say. Each GI is less than or equal to the corresponding AI. So once you've computed the characteristic polynomial, you have an upper bound for how big the eigenspace could be. We don't know whether that upper bound actually works or not. So in this example, both of these matrices have algebraic multiplicity two uh, for the eigenvalue three. But in one case, the geometric multiplicity is two matching a bound, in the other case, it's less. And then finally, some AI is less than or equal to N and some AI equals N if it only if the determinant factor is completely into linear terms. So the AI isn't the same as the GI, it could be bigger, but we have a really nice description for when the sum of the AIs is N and then the sum of the GIs is going to be less than or equal to that. Um, so we're gonna have, the only way to have an eigenbasis, here, we go back a slide. So, So the sum of the GI is going to be less or equal to the sum of the AI, which we say is going to be less or equal to N. That's putting theorems two and three together. Using theorem one, we have an eigenbasis if and only if the AI are equal to the GI and the sum of the AI is N. So this is just what happens when we stick all these theorems together. Theorem three tells us sum of AI less or equal to N. Theorem two tells us the GI are less or equal to the AI. Theorem one tells us sum of GI equals N if and only if we have an eigenbasis. So if it only if, so we have an eigenbasis if it only if each AI matches each GI, so we can have a quality over here, and the sum of VI is equals N, so we can have a quality over here. So putting it all together, oops, putting it all together, we have an eigenbasis if it only if all the geometric multiplicities actually match the algebraic multiplicities and the characteristic polynomial factors all the way into linear terms. Those are our theorems. And now this is a two-parter. Pause, take a stretch break, maybe make yourself some popcorn, come back and we'll prove these theorems. <laughs>